Suzanne Somers, the actress famous for playing Chrissy Snow on Three's Company, passed away shortly before her 77th birthday. But even after her death, new details about her life continue to emerge. Did you notice the other day that I was kind of losing thoughts? I fell a second time and developed something called hydrocephalus. But also, I, I find it it's uncomfortable to lose my point of view. I always tried to be perfect, but I'm not, she once said, reflecting on her journey from childhood to stardom alongside her husband, Alan Hamill. Her story is one of love, resilience, and overcoming challenges. Suzanne grew up in sunny San Bruno, California, in a big Irish-American family. Her parents worked hard, but her father struggled with alcoholism, casting a shadow over their home. Suzanne faced her own challenges, like bedwetting and dyslexia, which made school difficult. Despite these obstacles, she found her passion for acting in high school, where she excelled in plays and musicals. At 17, Suzanne's life took a dramatic turn when she stood up to her father's abuse on prom night. Despite setbacks, she graduated from Cappuccino High School and married young, putting her education on hold. Financial troubles led to legal issues, but Suzanne never lost hope. Her acting career began with small roles in the late 1960s and early 1970s, leading to appearances on talk shows and in films like American Graffiti. But it was her role as Chrissy Snow on Three's Company that made her a household name. The show's success didn't come without challenges. Suzanne fought for equal pay and faced backlash from the network. But with Alan by her side, she stood her ground and found success in Las Vegas and beyond. In the 1980s, Suzanne posed for Playboy and became a Vegas sensation, spreading joy to audiences worldwide. Despite setbacks, she continued to thrive in television and infomercials, earning her a place in the Industry Hall of Fame. Her life was full of ups and downs, but Suzanne faced each challenge with courage and determination. From her early struggles to her later triumphs, she proved that with love and perseverance, anything is possible. Suzanne discovered a fresh outlet for her abilities in the early 2000s when she joined the Home Shopping Network. Her own brand of home goods, apparel, and jewelry was featured on her more than 25 hours of airtime every month, enticing viewers with her impeccable taste and style. The Blonde and the Thunderbird, Suzanne's one-woman show that gave an honest look at her life and work, debuted on Broadway in the summer of 2005. Despite the show's problems and cancellation owing to low ratings, Suzanne showed remarkable resilience. For her 2012 web chat show, Suzanne Summers Breaking Through, Suzanne teamed up with Joyce DeWitt, her co-star from Three's Company from three decades earlier, for the first time in 31 years. Fans were moved to tears by their emotional reunion, which further cemented their everlasting friendship. That year, Suzanne continued to anchor The Suzanne Show on Lifetime, a show that delved into health and fitness with a wide variety of guests. People all around the nation were moved by her dedication to spreading messages of health and vitality. A fresh challenge awaited Suzanne in 2015 as she competed on Dancing with the Stars, displaying her dancing abilities with professional partner Tony Dovolani. Despite the fact that Suzanne's run-in with the program ended in week five, her sunny disposition and elegant presence won over fans worldwide. Suzanne Sizzles was Suzanne's 2015 theatrical comeback and she wowed audiences at the Westgate Las Vegas in May and June with her magnetic personality, charisma, and elegance. Suzanne Summers proved that age was nothing more than a number when it came to following her dreams and enjoying life to the fullest with each new venture she took on, inspiring and entertaining people all over the globe. However, she cared about more than just amusement. Despite her immense recognition and success, there were still some dark points in her life that she struggled to overcome. Her book, Three's Company, a 50-year romance with lessons learned in love, life, and business, recounted one such incident, and readers were taken aback by the authenticity of the story. This unsettling anecdote transports readers to a distant photo shoot in Mexico in the 1970s when Suzanne was basking in the sun by the poolside. An inebriated waiter interrupted her peace and quiet offering her some pot, just as she was about to unwind. Not cool, is it? Excuse me, but things just got worse. 
Suzanne was scared to death as he began to come too near, as if trying to kiss her. Thank goodness Suzanne was able to get out of there and seek shelter inside since she had no idea what to do. The terror, however, persisted. She drew back in terror, feeling completely exposed and all alone. At that moment, three crew members came back from the chute and frightened off the scary waiter, and Suzanne's knight in shining armor arrived at the last possible moment. That was only the beginning of the horror. A sleazy photographer was photographing Suzanne without her knowledge or permission the next morning when she awoke. The whole incident was an egregious violation of her privacy, and the pictures were meant for Playboy. Suzanne has faced hardship before. The medical expenses she incurred as a result of her son's catastrophic vehicle accident were overwhelming. Feeling imprisoned and anxious for a solution to her financial difficulties, Suzanne was taken aback when Playboy came knocking with their offer. She had rejected the invitation to be her playmate at first, but the compromising photographs kept popping up, giving her the creeps. But here's the thing, Suzanne is an innate fighter. She courageously shared her tale with the public and stood up against Playboy, refusing to let the event break her. And guess what? The bravery she displayed was much appreciated, as her admirers and friends rallied around her. Suzanne shared some wise words in her book, reassuring us that we may find light at the end of the tunnel. Ultimately, it's about overcoming hardship and coming out on top. Her book, Ageless, emphasized her strong medical beliefs and how she had been an ardent advocate for bioidentical hormone replacement treatment. This reading focuses on the Y protocol in particular, but it also includes interviews with 16 other therapists who use this approach. Having said that, not everyone agrees with this strategy. Concerned about its safety and effectiveness, a group of seven physicians brought attention to the lack of scientific proof and the hazards that may be involved. Although her comments on The Oprah Winfrey Show caused some unfavorable headlines, Suzanne remained unwavering in her support throughout the dispute. A personal health hurdle for Suzanne came in April 2000 when she received a breast cancer diagnosis. She bravely chose to skip chemotherapy in favor of radiation treatment and a lumpectomy. After that, six separate physicians gave Suzanne the bad news in November 2008. She had incurable cancer, but she found out it was a false diagnosis just a week after that. It was during this turbulent period that Suzanne began to investigate non-traditional cancer therapies. Her 2009 book, Knockout, was an outcome of this study. The medical world is divided over her book, since it discusses potential alternatives to chemotherapy. Suzanne, however, did not rest on her laurels. Concerned that fluoride was being characterized as a hazardous waste product of aluminum producers, she had previously been outspoken on the water fluoridation debate. Suzanne also caused a stir in January 2013, when she speculated that Adam Lanza's exposure to chemicals in his food and home cleaning products may have contributed to his actions in the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre. By questioning accepted wisdom and promoting openness to new ideas, Suzanne, via her advocacy work, ignited vital dialogues on health and well-being. Her dedication to bringing attention to and investigating other ideas on these pressing topics is undeniable, even if her opinions may have been divisive to some. In the days leading up to her metamorphosis, Suzanne had her share of exciting experiences. She got herself into a sticky position with a faulty check and even posed for some images where she bared everything. Well, well, blunders are inevitable, aren't they? Back then, she wasn't exactly street smart, and she was a single mother just trying to get by. Alan Hamill appeared out of nowhere, gliding in like a radiant knight. Alan handed Suzanne a marijuana brownie on their first date, no, it wasn't some sleazy Bill Cosby move to help her relax, so it was a throwback to their younger days. Suzanne was completely engrossed. They were having a wild time in San Francisco during the swinging 60s. They were grooving to Janis Joplin singing at the renowned Fillmore West, which is owned by Bill Graham. With her powder blue coat dress, Suzanne was prepared to turn heads. However, it was as if they had entered a another universe the moment they stepped inside. Seated on the floor, a cloud of smoke billowed into the air. Nonetheless, it was all a stepping stone on Suzanne's path to becoming the independent woman she ultimately became. 
Reflecting on the Weinstein scandal and the Me Too campaign, among other things, she developed strong views on many subjects years later. From the eerie actions of Dr. Richard Barron to the scandalous antics of Weinstein, she had seen it all. Suzanne didn't pass judgment, even though there was a lot to take in. The nuances of human nature and the depths to which some are pushed were crystal clear to her. Think about Harvey Weinstein. He discarded his popularity, wealth, and family despite having everything else. What pushed him to such a breaking point was a mystery to Suzanne. Was it a desperate plea for assistance or affirmation? It doesn't matter to Suzanne. She thought we can all grow and develop. It's as simple as putting forth the effort to overcome our weaknesses and become better people. Personal development was nothing new to Suzanne, however. There were many low points in her life, yet she always managed to emerge stronger than before. She made tremendous strides as she matured, embracing the ups and downs, learning from our errors, and striving to be our best selves is what life is all about. Sunday, October 15th, 2023 was the morning of Suzanne's passing. After a long fight with cancer that had metastasized throughout her body, she passed away. The details provided on the death certificate illuminate the direct cause of her death, which was determined to be breast cancer with brain metastases. The seriousness of her disease was further shown by the biopsy results that validated this diagnosis. Her death certificate noted a number of medical issues that contributed to her dying, including cancer, hypertension, and hydrocephalus. When there is an accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the ventricles of the brain, a disease known as hydrocephalus, it may put severe pressure on brain regions. The paper stated that Summers had been dealing with this problem for more than a year. The explosion report specifies that a Palm Springs funeral parlor was in charge of the preparations. Suzanne Summers' unforgettable performances in Three's Company and Step by Step won the hearts of viewers all around the globe and had a significant influence on the entertainment business. Her publicist R verified her death at 76 years of age. A new era began with Curry Hay. Those closest to Summer, including her son Bruce and husband Alan, were at her side as she died away, according to a statement issued by her family. What was supposed to have been a jubilant celebration of her 77th birthday turned into a solemn tribute to her remarkable life as they gathered to honor her. From the time of her breast cancer diagnosis in 2000 forward, Summer's health problems were extensively reported in the media. Many others who were going through tough times found encouragement in her honesty about her struggle with the sickness. She mirrored her husband's shock and surprise when she spoke about the mental and emotional toll the diagnosis had on her in an interview from 2001. There were many low points in Summer's health journey, but she never wavered in her determination to face cancer head-on, even after a recurrence in 2023. She courageously posted on Instagram about her continuing struggle with cancer, reiterating her resolve to combat the disease with both traditional and alternative methods. Suzanne had a full life before meeting her soulmate in Alan Hamill. She was married once to Bruce Summers, and the two of them had a kid together. These secrets came to light later. Like Marilyn Hamill, Alan had his own family from a previous marriage. But destiny intervened, and Alan and Suzanne began a friendship that would last for decades. Alan had many secrets to tell about his late wife when she went away. Alan thought back on their travels and remembered the strong connection they had. He spoke well of Suzanne, praising her as his wife, closest friend, and inspiration, and describing how they encouraged each other's dreams and found happiness in life's little pleasures. In 2000, Suzanne's diagnosis of breast cancer presented the greatest obstacle to their everlasting love story. Suzanne fearlessly fought the sickness with Alan's unfaltering support and encouragement, as she boldly opted for natural remedies. Suzanne had battled cancer twice before, but her resilience failed her on the third visit, and she died as a result. Alan revealed the tragic events of Suzanne's last moments after she left. He described the calm that he felt as he held Suzanne's hand as she passed away, knowing how much he loved her in the comfort of their house. Even if Suzanne isn't here in the flesh anymore, her wisdom and inspiration live on in her legacy. As Alan grieves, he takes consolation in the knowledge that Suzanne's love will always be there for him. 
Alan is resolute in his desire to pay tribute to Suzanne by continuing her work with their joint initiatives, Summer Size, and by writing a book about their extraordinary love story. This will guarantee that Suzanne's influence on society will last for years to come. After hearing of Summer's death, several people paid homage to her, including her son Bruce, Joyce DeWitt, and former co-star Patrick Duffy. Their sincere remarks highlighted the influence Summers has on people in her life and the enduring impression she makes. Please return for our next video. Thank you for viewing.